debugging. Something every developer will do at some point, so better do it right at the first try instead of using trial and error to get a result that might be less accurate. In this video, we'll discuss how you can properly debug your UI so that you get instant feedback. We will use it in our 3D scene, but it will also be applicable to any other web content. When it comes to UI debugging, developers often tend to just change the value a few times until it seems correct. And even though nowadays rebuilding your frontend might happen fast, it's still not as fast as live updates. And that is where GUI control libraries come into play. These libraries offer an extra GUI inside of the browser to update your variables real time. There are many libraries available for this, but we will be using Liva in this video because its integration with React and React Free Fiber is very good and it's incredibly easy to set up. It is still under heavy development, so be aware of that, but if you just use it for debugging purposes, then that won't be an issue. It's being maintained by Poemandrus, which also maintains React Free Fiber and other commonly used libraries. Before we start coding, if you want to code along, you can get the starting code for this video on my GitHub, which is linked in the description. I also want to mention that 86% of you still is not subscribed to the channel, so if you're liking the content, then please support the effort I put into making these videos by clicking the subscribe button down below. That being said, let's start coding. To use Liva, we will need to install it first in the root of our project. Once this is done, let's create a separate function called tweakable box, where we will create a box which we are going to tweak inside of the browser. Liva doesn't require any configuration or initialization, so we can directly use the use control hook to create a tweakable property. It expects an object as a parameter, which should contain the properties that you want to tweak inside the browser. Let's start by adding the scale. After saving the changes, you will automatically see a new GUI where we can tweak the value. In case you're tweaking many values, then it might be worth it to put those into separate folders. Therefore, you can pass a string as the first argument, or for nested folders, you can use the folder function. Pass an object and the values inside of that object will also be returned. Be aware that the return value contains all tweakable properties flattened inside one object, which means that using folders has no impact on the return type. Let's now configure the tweakable scale a bit further. In case you want to set a minimum or maximum, you can move the value inside of an object and pass the min and max values with it. You can also set a step value, which indicates how big the difference is between each tick in the slider. So that's how you can tweak a number, but Liva also automatically recognizes other types. Let's for example add a hexadecimal RGB string for the color of the box and pass it to the material. Liva recognizes the format of the string and therefore automatically adds a color picker to the GUI. Another commonly used type is a boolean. By passing a boolean value, Liva will automatically add a checkbox which can be toggled. And the last type we will discuss in this video is the vector 3. This one might be useful in case you want to edit a position, a rotation or any other vector 3 value. There are more types that Liva has built in support for, but I'll let you discover those on your own. Next to tweaking, it's also possible to move your GUI around, collapse it or search for specific properties. If you want to customize the GUI in your code, you can create a Liva component anywhere in your project and give it some configuration parameters. You could for example collapse the GUI by default or not show it at all by passing the hidden property. But let's stick with the default configuration for now. If you want to perform custom code from the GUI, then you might want to add a button. In this case we're just logging to the console, but it might for example be useful to reset your tweaked properties to their defaults. You cannot simply change the value of the property because it is stateful, but changing it is still pretty easy. Liva contains a set method, which can be obtained by converting the second parameter to a function and wrap the return value in an array with the set function as the second element. Now you can use the set element to reset the values. One last thing about Liva that I want to have mentioned is the onChange property, which makes it possible to perform custom actions whenever a value changes. But be aware, by using this, you will have access to the changed value in your onChange function, so you won't get it returned anymore. And that's all for this video. If you have experience with any other GUI control libraries, then feel free to share your experiences with us. Please like the video if you did and support me by subscribing to the channel. Ciao!